Hey there everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. Today I'm going to be using Simon Says Stamps new August 2023 card kit and I'm really excited to share the cards that I have with you today because I'm going to be using products that I actually designed for this kit. So one of the products that I designed is the Retro Wishes stamp set, which is also the name of the kit. There are coordinating dies, which I'll be using today to cut out some of my stamped images. I'm going to be creating a repeating pattern with this one floral image. And it's a two piece stamping process that you can piece together with two different colors of ink to create some really cool medallions. I'm going to use one of my negative die cut papers to use that as a guide for where I'm going to be placing my stamps on my die cut images. This way I can stamp things over and over and over again very quickly and easily. So I've lined up one of my images into that negative space and now I'm going to take one of my die cuts and place it into that negative area. I'm going to start first by stamping all of this particular pattern with green. This is kind of a leafy looking pattern and I thought it would look pretty with green and then the florals are gonna be colored in different colors of inks. So I have one piece ready and now to make this process super fast and easy, I'm just gonna take each one of my individual die cuts, nestle it into that negative space and then just keep stamping that particular pattern over and over again until all of my pieces are stamped. So this makes mass producing these little medallions really quick and easy. And when we're ready to switch on over to the florals, we'll do the same thing. I lined up that floral image inside of the negative space, placed my die cut inside, and now I can go through and stamp with different colors of ink, that beautiful floral design, and every single die cut is going to be stamped in the exact same place. When I have a piece like this that's completely stamped, I'll typically use my tweezers to help pull it out, just so that way I don't smudge the ink while it's drying. For those tweezers, those are Simon Says Stamps reverse tweezers. So I have a whole bunch of pretty little medallions that I've stamped and I'm going to take my Tim Holtz mini trimmer now and trim a few of these that are going to be hanging off the edges of my paper so that way they have a nice flush clean cut. I'm using foam tape to attach these down and I do want some of the medallions to come in from the top and sides of my card panel which is why I'm trimming them to create that nice flush cut. I'm going to save any leftover pieces for decorating the inside of the card, which I think is a fun way to be able to tie your front design to the interior. So after I've attached all of my little medallions onto my card and created this really nice pattern, we're ready to start putting our card together. I have another piece of white cardstock that's slightly smaller than my A2 size card, and I'm going to use some glue stick from Simon's Stamp to put a bit of adhesive on the back side of this paper. This paper is going to be the area where you can write a message to the recipient and I wanted to decorate this with some of those leftover medallion pieces. So I'm just using some of that same glue stick to put a bit of adhesive on the back side of these half medallions and I'll put one along the top and the bottom of this panel. This dresses up the interior and it creates a really continuous look as you have the front of the card with these pretty medallions and then you open it up and they continue to the inside. I think that's really fun. So for the front of the card, I'm going to use that same glue stick to attach my background panel onto my A2 card. I've used some Nina Desert Storm cardstock to create that card base. That cardstock is included in the kit. It's a really nice color that goes well with a lot of the inks that I chose today to make my backgrounds. And I have all the colors of inks that I use from Simon's Stamp along with all the other products that I'm mentioning today listed below in the video description and on my blog. So if you're curious about anything, you can find that information there. So our card is coming together, it looks so pretty. I'm going to add a sentiment here from the Retro Wishes stamp set and I'm going to stamp this onto some black cardstock with embossing ink. I really love a crisp black sentiment with white embossing powder on top. I think it stands out really well amongst a lot of colors. So I'm going to go ahead and heat set this. I'm gonna use a Simon Says Stamp clothespin to help hold my paper and keep my fingers from getting burned from that heat tool. And once I've set this, then I'll use the coordinating dies to cut this greeting out. The larger greetings in the stamp set do have coordinating dies, which is really nice. So that way you can pop these up on top of your backgrounds. And I'm just gonna put that along the bottom right corner of the card. So we're almost done, but I did want to add a little bit of sparkle. So I pulled in some clear sequins and I'm just going to drop a few of these around the greeting. This adds a nice little trail of sparkle and it's just a small finishing touch that doesn't distract from the background, but catches your eye. 
So that is card number one with the fun interior and all those beautiful floral medallions on the front of the card. If you didn't want to go through the trouble of die cutting, you could have stamped this background straight onto a card panel and not have to go through the trouble of actually popping these up on foam tape. So the choice is yours. You have some options on how you want to recreate this card. I love the pattern papers that are in this kit and the new Margot tile embossing folder. I thought it'd be fun to emboss the pattern paper. So I've cut this paper down to fit inside of the embossing folder and I did spritz it with a little bit of water to go ahead and keep the paper from cracking as I run this through my die cut machine. So once I run this through my machine, I'm gonna have this really cool embossed pattern on top of this pattern paper, which I think makes the paper stand out even more. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this down to be slightly smaller than an A2 sized card. And I'm going to pop this up onto my card base using some Simon Says Stamp white foam. These handy little white foam sheets are perfect for using behind background panels. And because this is pattern paper, it's a little thinner than cardstock. So I want this to be really nice and stable on my card. That's why I'm reaching for this specific foam. And this foam is also die cuttable. Not all foams are, but this one is. So it's really handy for using behind die cuts too. I used Simon Says Stamp Terrific Tape to attach this onto my pattern paper and then onto my A2 size card. This is a card base from Simon Says Stamp. It's nice and bright white. And this one is top folding. To embellish my card, I thought I would cut apart this sheet of pattern paper that has a bunch of little images on it. And I'm gonna mat this little floral vase with some of the champagne cardstock that's included in the kit. I'll just run a bit of glue stick behind the paper and then adhere that down onto the metallic cardstock. Then I'll just use my trimmer to cut down the excess so that way it has a really nice thin border around the picture. And this will get layered up onto the center of my card. I used foam tape for that as well. And at this point I was ready for a greeting, but I wanted something that would match really well with the color of the pattern paper. So I'm gonna make my own cardstock by taking some Simon Says Stamp ink and smearing it onto a sheet of white cardstock. In the end, I ended up choosing Field. I had Perfection and Field as my choices, and I felt Field was the better match. So after letting that dry, I'm going to stamp on this with some embossing ink. I'm using one of the greetings from the stamp set and I'm going to prep the surface of my paper with a powder tool prior to stamping just to help make sure that the powder doesn't stick to any places I don't want. Once I've stamped it, I'm gonna use some Simon Says Stamp Cream embossing powder to sprinkle over top. This is a little softer than bright white, which will give a warm appearance to the sentiment. Now I did have some spots where the ink was a little wet, probably in the areas that were most heaviest amount of ink on top. And I'm just gonna use a brush to get any excess around the greeting that would be impacting the die cutting areas. I just wanna get that cleaned up. Anything else I'm not really worried about. So I set the powder and then I'm gonna use the coordinating dies to cut out the greeting. To hold this in place, I am using very, very low tack tape from Simon Says Stamp. This is really gentle on your paper so it doesn't tear anything when you peel it back off and my greeting will get centered underneath of the flower pot. This card is complete. I wanted to keep it nice and simple so that way the beautiful paper and the embossing that we did takes center stage. Now the embossing folder is really fun. It can be used in a lot of different ways. So I'm gonna show you another technique using the embossing folder and I'm going to start with some of the Nina Desert Storm cardstock that's in the kit. I misted it with a little bit of water before putting this in my folder and running it through my machine. So we have, of course, two sides of every pattern of the embossing folder. You have the raised side and then you have the what I call debossed side. Depending on which side you use, you'll get a different look when you apply ink over top. So here I'm taking one of the white pigment ink pads that's included in the kit and I smeared it over top of the embossed folder design. If you look at this other piece that I made using the reverse side of the pattern, you can see by applying the ink over top, we got a completely different look. I think both are cool and both can be used to make really cool backgrounds on your cards, which is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to use the rainbow image from the Retro Wishes stamp set. And I'm gonna stamp this twice so I have a rainbow for each of my two cards. And I'm using the negative space like I did for the first card to help line my images up onto my die cuts because I want these to be exactly the same and this is going to make it super fast and easy to do that. So I'm going to stamp each of these rainbow arches with different colors of inks from Simon Systems Positively Saturated Ink Collection, starting with blush, 
and I'm going to continually repeat this process across my two die cut rainbows. So once I stamped one, I removed the die cut from the negative space, placed the next one in, and then stamped again. So I have the same rainbow arch in the exact same place for each die cut. So now we'll move on to step two, which is C2. Each one is marked with a number, so that way you can go in chronological order and know which piece goes where. So now I'll replace my die cut back in the negative space. And this time using the second arch, I'm going to stamp again with another color of ink. So we're building our rainbow. This color is melon. I then also stamped with sunbeam. It's a nice medium shade of yellow. Sage was the green. And then finally I'll finish things up with a little bit of blue. And this one is morning. So we have our retro -y rainbow here and we're ready to attach this onto our card. I decided to add a little scalloped border onto each of my cards by using this slimline chunky scallop die from Simon's the Stamp. It creates a really cool scalloped panel for a slimline card, but it also works great for borders too, because it's long. So I die cut it from the pattern paper and then I just trim this down so that way it was the exact size that I wanted. And then I can put this on top of my backgrounds. I used some terrific tape to hold this in place. It's a nice strong adhesive and because we have a textured background, I want to make sure it sticks really well. On top of that, I also glued a small strip of the metallic champagne cardstock, which is so pretty. And then finally, we'll put our rainbow on top of that. This layered effect looks really cool and the texture from the embossing folder adds a lot of depth. I put some more of that Simon's the Stamp white foam behind my background panel just to make sure I get a really nice stable support behind all of these pieces when I pop this up onto my A2 size card. These are side folding A2 cards and I'm creating both of these rainbow cards exactly the same way. The only difference between these two cards is that each one uses the other side of the embossing folder. For my greeting, I just picked out a thinking of you sentiment. I stamped it on black with white embossing powder, and that's going to complete these cards. It's so much fun to see how something subtle, changing which side of the embossed background that you use to create your background makes quite a difference on your card. So even though these cards are exactly the same, they each have their own personality. Well, I hope you were inspired by the cards that I shared today and that you got some ideas on how you can use this Simon Says Stamp Retro Wishes card kit. I hope you love the kit. I had a lot of fun designing the elements that were included, the stamp set and also the pinwheel stencils. I didn't use those on the cards that I have shared in this video, but if you go over to Simon Says Stamp's Instagram channel, you can see this card that I'm showing on screen right now, how I made it using the stencils, stamps, and more from the kit. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. I'll be back soon to share more with you all. But until then, I hope you have a fabulous day.